Alrighty guys, welcome back for our last doubleheader of the night. It's Cloud9 versus Selfless. And we're going to see these guys facing off first on Train. Should be an interesting matchup. A couple of new names here for the Selfless side. You've got um, Nifty, who we've seen play before, but Mitch is their fifth now. So this is going to be very interesting to see how they adapt with this new fifth. Um, Selfless does pick up the knife round, so they're going to be starting on the CT side. And we'll see how this one unfurls. Yeah, Mitch, formerly of Vault, and Nifty from uh, Astral Authority. Um, Cod Transplant was a big player in Call of Duty, I think, for Elevate. Uh, now he's playing CSGO. I've always thought that he had a lot of raw potential. Uh, I've seen him play multiple times, so it's kind of neat to see him get an opportunity in the Pro League. But they did play with this roster already on train against CLG, and it was a 16-6 victory. What's surprising is they've played the map three times on the season, and when they had Kusta in the roster on that op-heavy train, they lost both maps. So now that they've changed the roster, somehow it works, and they were able to defeat CLG of all teams uh, in their first, I think it was like their first match with this roster, actually. We'll have to see. A little bit of damage through the spam spot. Relics does go down inside. Freakazoid's going to be able to open up onto that, and they've got one more in the inner upper to deal with. That's going to be Mainline, who actually gets taken down by Stewie2K. Coming around on the back line, Shroud, though, pushing forward on the back of the train yard. He's going to be able to find one and done. Uber does answer back, but he goes down immediately afterwards, and now it's just down to Mitch. One versus three. Freakazoid from the backside. Going to be able to chip him down a little bit. Switching over to the burst fire. Still trying to just play a little bit of uh, bait and switch with him right now. He's just looking for something. I mean, he's really not going to pick up the round at this point. Too much time has been ticked off that bomb, and he realizes it. He's just going to try and save the armor pistol that he's already got. He's going to backpedal and surrender the round to Cloud9. So a great take on the inner sight. Um, we'll see Cloud9 go into the first semi-buy, as I expect to see some SMGs. The question is whether or not Selfless goes for the armor pistol. A little less common for a CT team, uh, especially when you want to play the AWP on a map like Train, but it's not uncommon. Uh, they're going to put a nade on Uber. Curious to see if they're going to pick up a few more. Maybe try to do a uh, nade stack towards T-Con. But looks like they're going to stay pretty much just uh, pistols nifty. Not even opting to get anything more than a USP. It's a pretty in expensive investment from Uber. He picks up a pistol and a nade. 600 bucks spent in a round where nothing else is being purchased on the CT side. So um, he's going to be down at 1250. P250 in the hands of Relics. He's going to be at 1200 as well as mainline. So... A lot of money being spent here on the CT side, even though they've got nothing really to work with. And now you can see a little bit of aggression outside. Nothing's going to find Nifty. Takes him down. The two ends going at it right now. And nothing comes out on the winning side. But Relics from the side, not able to connect. Drops him to 20 HP, but that inside bomb site has been open for business. And now Freakazoid coming around the side. Mitch going to be able to take him down. He's going to get in MAC-10, but he's not going to be able to get out alive. That's going to be Stewie shutting him down. And now it's just down to Team Uber. See what he can do. He's got that P250 Franklin waiting for anyone from the T side to push towards him. Skadoodle is just jump peeking around with the MP7, probably to continue that fashion if he comes around the bend. Not going to allow Uber to line up an easy headshot. And he's not even going to give him that. He's just going to push back towards the B site. Skadoodle just running around right now. Actually gets stuck on the ladder. Finally spots Uber making his way out. Oh, wow. A lot of damage considering that was flying through the air. Uber gets the MAC 10. Can he escape with his life towards the back of the bomb yard? He's trying to hold on to it, peeking left and right. Oh! The headshot on the Skadoodle midair! So he manages to hold on to the MAC-10, but uh, it's not really going to do too much for them, as it's going to be another save from the rest of his team. Never know, man. Never yeah, know. We never saw, know. We saw Impact. Daps earlier tonight getting some wrecking kills with that MAC-10, so we'll see if Uber can do it this time around. Maybe get a little aggressive here in the inner upper and play on this off angle and see if he can spray somebody down with that, but... Uh, again, Cloud9, 2-0, looking for 3-0. Freakazoid going to be on the MAC-10 again. Smokes and flashes go out. He's going to do entry fragging duties outside. See if he can locate any of the heads. As, uh, well, looks like they're actually going to rethink their strat. 
And Stewie's gonna lead on the way out. So Stewie leading the charge, Freakazoid behind him. It's an open A bomb site. And uh, nobody is gonna be home. So the take is on, and they're gonna get in here for free. Yeah, so they went for that B stack. Didn't really work out. They're going to be coming in for the retake. Not going to work out early on as Stewie is able to take down Mitch and Z Connector, the new player for Cloud9. Having a pretty good inaugural season with the team. Generated a lot of uh, ridicule when he first joined the roster, but he's been picking up as the season's gone on. It comes down to just Nifty here with the USP and Z Connector, and it's not going to work out for him. Freakazoid jumping around the corner with the MAC-10. Cleans things up quite easily, and now we come into the first buy here. And I'm thinking that Nifty is probably going to pick up that op. There you go. It's going to be with body armor, not head armor. And we'll potentially see... Nope. Skadoodle's going to stick on the AK as he hasn't really been able to generate too much money. So no op duel as of yet. I really want to see Nifty versus Skadoodle. You know, the talented Skadoodle a long time. Uh, Opper versus a young gun like Nifty. Kind of interesting to see how things play out. Yeah, and it looks like heavy presence already towards inside. They're just not even going to wait. They're going to push on in. This is a very fast strat from C9. I like the pace. And they actually already dink Mainline down. That MAC-10 doing duties already in this round. And Mainline, he's going to be stuck behind this smoke on sidewalk, trying to find the way through. He does manage to flash his way through, and he catches the back. Oh, rip. That's like the 57th TK we've seen so far tonight. Ridiculous. Skadoodle does answer back with two frags. He finally goes down. Nifty with the USP is going to be able to find one, but Uber goes down as well, and it's all on Nifty in a 1v3. That fast strat inside pays off. Mitch with a TK, and that's all she wrote. So we were really hoping that Nifty would have an impact, but it doesn't happen as of yet. And, you know, he's going to retreat with the AWP and try and save it for another round. One of the things I've always had a lot of respect for with regards to selfless slash enemy is their ability to kind of sniff out talent. So I'm, I really want to see Nifty and Mitch playing against, uh, you know, veterans like nothing and shroud and even uh, skadoodle i want to see how they impact rounds because it's one thing to be able to go against teams like agg and uh you know go punch for punch but to go against a team like cloud nine who's been tested on international soil is completely different uh early on though we don't get to see that duel nifty has to survive with the op as he went for the retake it was a 1v3 it's going to be a save from the rest of his team we'll see if he's able to make an impact here as he takes the op towards ivy yeah, he's going to go full aggression down Ivy as well. He just barrels on through. Unfortunately for him, nobody's going to be there as it's another fast outside take. And Stewie opening up, finds the spray transfer, takes down Uber and Relics. And that outside bomb site is going to be open for business. So Nifty's already in a position where he's going to try to hold on to this off for the next round. There's really not going to be much that he can do to impact this round. Yeah, I mean, he's basically saving again. He realizes that there's nothing he can do. All he can do is try and hold on to the AWP again as the rest of his team gets slaughtered, and he's in a really tight spot here. Freakazoid's right around the corner. Great no-scope. I mean, yeah, it's point blank, but a good reaction shot from Nifty, but now they know where he is, and I imagine they're going to come hunting. They're going to send one right down Ivy. Nifty was holding for it, but decides wisely to back off. Doesn't want to get pushed from Connector as well. And he's got yep. support from Mainline towards the top of ladder. Yeah, I was going to say, Mainline up in this position, he's going to be able to find one. Stewie comes around, but Nifty is going to be there, so they get an AK out of the round as well. And that looks like all the chase that they really want to do. Nothing is in a position where he could try to come up behind them, but, I mean, again, he's going to peek the wrong direction, and he gets punished for it. So they drop four rifles out of that round, so that's a lot of rebuys. Stewie's sitting on 13,000. Freakazoid's on 10,000. He just now lost that MAC-10. So now we see the op on op. This is where Selfless needs to make a hold. They need to start putting rounds on the board because Cloud9's starting to run away with this one a little bit. They've got the economy on their side heavily in their favor. 8,600 on Stewie, even after the buy down. He's 7 and 1. He's been playing very, very well for Cloud9 lately. Let's see if he can continue to do so as they move forward into this round. Well, they're going to post Mitch up towards Ivy right now as there's heavy presence from Cloud9 on the outer site. Freakazoid's already made his way out of T-Connector. They've got Relics and T-Hell right now, and he's in a really tight spot as he's being pushed from Ivy and from yeah, Sandwich, and you can see Freakazoid just comes through easy peasy as the push from Ivy kept Relics distracted. A good refrag there for Freakazoid as Uber was able to kill Stewie coming around from Ivy as well. Mitch sitting towards Old Bomb. Support coming in by way of Mainline towards the same spot. Nifty and Z-Connector with the AWP. Mitch gets the opener as they go for the retake. He's going to look for a second one. Spots Freakazoid out, and now it's just Shroud here. Back behind E-Box, but we know what Shroud is capable of, and the bomb is planted for him. Doesn't matter. It's a huge 4K round for Mitch. And there you go. That's the round we've been waiting to see. One of these young guns, one of the players who hasn't yet been tested against a bigger team, has a big round for Selfless, and they pick up the first one on their CT side. 
This is actually a massive round from him. Big 4K on the outside train yard. Locks it down, wins a couple of really nice duels. And, you know, that's one of those things where it's like, how is this, how is this guy going to be able to adapt? How is he going to perform? Because he is relatively young. I mean, he's 19 years old. According to his ESEA page, he's 19 years old. Um, and clearly a very talented individual. Gets a nice 4K there against Cloud9. Shuts it down and pretty much single-handedly gets selfless their first round on the board. So nicely done for Mitch. Makes up for that earlier TK on the first gun round. And this time around, it's going to be 5-1. to one. Mitch holding in the same spot this round with Cloud9 putting two players back towards Ivy right now on the opposite side of that smoke. It's nothing, and Stewie, and they eat that nade. Nothing dropped down to 63. Stewie down to 80. Skadoodle right now into E connector, peeking towards Brown Train. He's got the AWP. He's looking to spot the head of a player peeking on that ladder. Not going to find anything just yet. Relics and Mitch still locking down. Actually, that's Nifty who's rotated into the T Hell position. And he gets flanked from Freak, who just walks out of T Connector right up through the sandwich train and pops Nifty into the side of the head. Uber gets spotted. Freakazoid sees the rifle bouncing around in heaven. He's going to be looking for the peak, and there you go. The entries go the way of Cloud9, and it's yet another retake here for Selfless. Nothing coming around from the Ivy side. I figured they were probably just going to yield this, concede this round, but. Looks like they are going to go ahead and push on forward. Nothing over here by Ivy. He's going to hit a shot there on the main line. He's going to push behind this, but Relics is going to get a nice off shot. Skadoodle's having none of that. He says, I'm the only oppa here. So nicely done. Cloud9 answer right back. They could force up here on the, on the CT side. Maybe drop a couple pistols over, and they are actually going to force on up. Nifty picking up the AWP. He's got body armor behind that M4 for Relics. He drops a pistol over, and they've got an M4 on Mitch. So a little bit of a desperation by force up here from the selfless gaming side. See if they can make it work. Uh, but, you know, again, I mean, these fast outside strats, they're already out. And there you go. Uber's going to find a nice shot. He's got to go for the reload, but he drops a nade right on him. That's a beautiful nade on the Skadoodle. Does 57 damage. Mitch coming around from Ivy. Looking for nothing behind the smoke. The flashbang goes out. He is going to be able to take him down. Mitch finds one. Mainline answers back as well. They've got Skadoodle over here. They know that Mitch is in this corner. And Skadoodle's going to just decapitate him. But Nifty answers back. It's all down to Skadoodle 1 versus 2. And one of the players that is consistently bailing Cloud9 out of tight situations is Skadoodle. But it's a really tight one this time. So selfless pick up a round and... Nifty picking up two on the round. Mainline coming in from ladder was a big player. He was able to shut down Freak, who uh, barreled out of T-Connector. And right now, that's been the problem for Selfless, is control of T-Connector. They haven't been able to stop Cloud9 from sending Freakazoid right down to Sandwich and just uh, annihilating the players in T-Hell. Um, he's been consistently making his way out. They haven't really had much of a presence on T-Con, so that's really what needs to change as the half progresses. And they're going to go with a somewhat less standard two-man hold towards the inner side as Mainline goes for a pop flash here for Nifty. Good teamwork, but no one home, so Nifty's just going to hold with the AWP and wait for the peak. And hold he does. Peak they do. Finds Stewie 2K, takes him down early. And actually Mitch going to get an exchange with uh, nothing there at Ivy and actually takes him down to 20 HP. But Uber's got to be careful. They've actually snuck a player out through mid to old hell and it's Freakazoid. Find a two. One more on the bomb train to deal with, and that's going to be Uber, and Freak just barely doesn't get that kill. So it's down to a 3v3. 19 HP for Uber, 20 for nothing. So a little bit back and forth to start this round off. Bomb hasn't even moved in. Skadoodle's going to go retrieve that, but it's nifty to find nothing outside of Ivy. Skadoodle moving on in. Uber can spot over top of the smoke, and he's going to find that frag onto Skadoodle and bring it back to a 1 versus 3. So nicely managed here from Selfless. They shouldn't have a problem picking up this final kill as it is going to be Shroud, but Shroud picks up the AWP, and yep, he's not going to get very far. Three kills on the round for Nifty, two for Uber, and a pretty solid outside hold, all things considered, with that hero play from Freakazoid, who's actually top fragging for Cloud9 at 10 and 6. And again, he just makes his way out mid without any real fight. Uh, he consistently gets past the blue train and just goes towards T-Hell and obliterates anyone in that position, catches them off guard. Uh, you know, I called it Selfless is really struggling with control of that territory, and Sel uh it's been Cloud9 who's been exploiting it. Freakazoid just consistently making his way out mid without any real fight. Uh, he's lining up a smoke now. We'll see where this one lands. Looks like it's going to be just an attempt to plant a bomb on the outside or potentially a fake. But you can see Stewie also lining up. This is just going to be a smoke strategy for the A site and an attempt to get some extra money by getting the bomb down. Yeah, the smokes go out. No forward positions here from the CT side, so they can get out on this bomb site on the T side. They can have full control of this. Mitch going up on top of the trains. He's going to get blinded out. He's going to get pushed. 
He probably killed in the same fashion that he did the round before, or two rounds ago, but now they've yielded this FAMAS and Freakazoid finds two more. Now Nifty spotting down towards Old Hell, he's not going to anticipate that Shroud is up this close on Ivy, so if he decides to push around to the back side of that train lane, he's probably going to get taken down from that off angle from Shroud. Does pop a shot, not going to be able to connect on that one. And now the CTs are moving on up forward into this bomb site. Relics trying to find these two players that are over here by Old Hell and T-Con. Peeks the wrong direction though, and Freakazoid's going to find that. And if he does find Shrouded Ivy, it's down to a two versus two. And Freakazoid, he's got four on the round. Nothing finds the last one. And it's a raw eco round victory. I mean, they've invested nothing into that round. But somehow Freakazoid doesn't pick up a gun at the end there. Uh, he had a he tried AK to swap and for the threw it away. Yeah, he think he double dropped, so he ended up dropping both guns and picks up nothing. He gets a Tech Nine for his troubles. But uh, I mean, guess where Freakazoid came out of, and and guess what he did? He's done it like every single round, and it's blowing my mind right now that Selfless has not figured this out. Uh, consistently making his way out of mid. I can't say it enough times. He's been basically winning rounds for Cloud Nine by taking two. Maybe even three players out of the round almost every time. They go for a push on Ivy, and it's shut down by nothing, and Skadoodle Mitch, the only one picking up a frag. Bomb is down in that direction, but it's not really going to matter. It's just mainline left standing here. He's got a P250 in his hand. Actually, it looks like the bomb was outside of T-Connector, so not even towards Ivy. And mainline just trying to maybe find one more, even potentially a gun, but it looks like it's the eighth round coming on here for Cloud9. He can push up and get this AK. There is nobody that's actually watching this gun right now, so he's going to get an AK out of this round. That's a nice little find if he's able to carry that into the next round, but he's going to be in a tough spot to try to hold on to this one. But again, I mean, in the position that they're in right now, 8-3, to three, Cloud9 having a tremendous terrorist side half, leading the way is Freakazoid, 14-6 and six for him. How often do we actually say Freakazoid top fragging? doesn't really happen all that often, but... You know, this is a, a pretty spectacular performance that he's had so far in this matchup. And if he continues on, it's going to be very difficult for Selfless to stay alive in this match. Yeah, statistically, he's struggled across the season. Uh, you know what, though? Uh, his job is to get a one and done. And now that they've picked up Stewie as well, both players can kind of fulfill the entry frag role. So even if Freak goes down, they have that backup player in Stewie who can do the same thing, which is kind of why I was curious to see why they picked him up in the first place. But it's not important to talk about right now. Freakazoid is the one that's really been opening rounds, and he's been doing his job perfectly. And we'll see if he continues to do what he's been doing the entire map, which is just basically bullying the outside site. No pun intended. Oh. No pun intended, I swear. As I said, oh. it was accidental. But a good peek from T-Connector yet again. A one and one for Freakazoid. Uber and Mainline both getting kills for the CT side of Selfless, but a response from Shroud forces things back to a three-on-three. Nifty's still playing on the back of the IV lanes, waiting for a push to come out, but it's Skadoodle inside. Gonna find that aggression from Uber and punish it. 2v3 now, the bomb rotating back to the outside train yard, and both of the CTs now inside, so reading the situation a little bit wrong. And now they get the train yard for free outside. Nifty on the rotation, might get caught out by Skadoodle, who does spot him, I believe, coming around from the back lines. One by T-Con. I believe that's going to be nothing. Yes, it is. Watching for a flank to come around. Relic's working around, working his way around towards ladder room, but he's got to contend with Skadoodle, who's actually playing down there, watching this angle on Nifty. Spots Nifty, takes him down. One more behind. Gets oh, the wall there sweet. onto Relic's. Hello. Relic's couldn't finish him off fast enough, so there you go. 9-3 to three now, Cloud9. Now, in their last match against CLG, Selfless started on the T side, and that was where they put up a majority of their rounds, picking up 12 against CLG. Uh, they didn't really play much on the CT side because it was a uh, 3-4 half at that point. They only had to pick up, play the first seven rounds. So we didn't really get to see them play the CT side with this team yet. And obviously CLG struggling as of yet in the season, whereas Cloud9 may have had a few hiccups, but for the most part, they're performing on par with how you would expect, especially right now, off to a 9-3 and start. Uh, looking really solid. It's another eco here for Selfless. As they molly down ladder, Skadoodle's going to get a pick from T-Con. Finds a second as well. Uber comes around the corner and catches him off guard, but Freakazoid there with a backup. They're going to try and get into position. Relics, great shooting on the CZ. Manages to find nothing. But again, look who's left. It's mainline all by himself. It's a 1v3. He's got a P250. Somehow gets the running shot onto Stewie. But Cloud9 ends the damage there. It's the 10th round on the board. Yeah, and this is starting to really get out of hand right now. Cloud9, recent couple of matches they've looked a lot better in, especially on Cash last night against Complexity, which is the next map in this uh, double BO1 uh, series between these two teams. And, you know, that's the scariest part about it because the big T side half, we know that Cloud9 is very comfortable on CT sides. 
Their T side has just been exemplary throughout. Skadoodle again, gonna find that opening pick. Trying to back out of that Molotov, goes down to 14, so that's a little unlucky, but Stewie's gonna be there to clean up one more. Uh, fortunately for Relics, he didn't go for that fast peek around the corner. He could have punished that one as well, but smoke comes out, and where there's a smoke, there's also a flash and a Stewie 2K, so we might see him push on out, but now getting aggressive as Mainline Shroud punishes, and that inside train yard is open for business, so they're gonna go ahead and hustle on down in that area. And, Leave the remaining two selfless players to question why. Why can't we get around on the board? It's been a very lopsided affair as of yet. Uh, selfless just really can't manage to do anything on their CT side. And really, they've struggled with outer control so much so that they're sending four players there consistently isolating one man on the inside. So if they do go for the inner execution, I think it's Mainline who's holding the spot. And it's really difficult to solo hold, uh, especially the way he's been playing it. He's not using any kind of like scoped rifle at a long range. One of the old things you used to see teams do on train before they re revamped the map was that uh, Scar 20 buy playing upper. I saw a lot of teams do it. Forrest used to do it all the time for Nip. Uh, I think it was Device who would do it for Dignitas. A lot of teams who were really uh, solid at playing train were popular for picking up the Scar 20 when things would start to go their way. A good team frag yet again, adding to the tally for the evening, but Cloud9 come on top of the round. It's now 11-3 to in a match that I expected to be a lot closer. Funny thing, Stewie was like 7-1 and one at the beginning of this match. He's now 9-8. and eight. So I praised him earlier, and then he goes and disappoints me. Boy. And Shroud lately, what's been the deal with him? He got six kills in the entirety of the cash match yesterday against Complexity when they won 16-2. to two. He's got six kills so far on the T side. One of them was an eco round cleanup. So, little odd performances going on. Now, granted, Skadoodle, Nothing, and Freakazoid are kind of stepping up to the plate right now. But, I mean, across the board, I mean, Shroud's performance has kind of dropped off recently. Well, that's kind of the thing with the roster right now. They're actually in a pretty good spot where anyone can pick up and kind of carry the role that Shroud sometimes would have to do himself. So now that they've got Skadoodle and they've got Stewie and Freakazoid also chiming in, you know, they can kind of relax a little bit. Uh, you know, one player can have an off night and the others can pick up the slack. And even still, across the season, Shroud's been playing great. He's just been doing what Shroud has always been doing, which has been, uh, he's been the clutch player, picking up a lot of 1v2 and 1vxs. I think he's got like seven uh, 1vx situations across the season thus far, which has been big for his team. And he's also leading uh, a lot of other stat lines as well. Good hold from Selfless right now as Mainline and Uber clean things up on the outer site, trying to make their way out of T-Connector. Skadoodle with the AWP gets spotted by Uber. He's playing the ladder game right now. A great shot onto Uber. But now they know where he is, and Mitch is creeping into position. Skadoodle's going to get gunned down in his prime. It's just nothing over on Ivy, so the fourth round comes in for Selfless. But this is still a pretty tough half for them as Cloud9 really punished the outer sight. Yeah, I can't really see him coming back from this one right now. I mean, as much as you want to root for the underdog in this one, Cloud9 looks very, very good right now. Very poised on train. And this is one of the maps where they found a lot of success in in the past, especially, you know, when they went on that little bit of a three-month tear, or the one-month tear, where they played three tournaments and did very, very well, and Train was one of the maps that they looked to play almost all the time because, you know, they had really good fortune. They beat Envious on it, you know, a couple of... And that was when Envious was looking much better before they went for their roster change and everything like that. So, um, you know, Cloud9 looking good on Train again. Very strong terrorist side half. It's going to come down to this pistol round. This is kind of a must-win must, must win round for Selfless, and we'll see if they can pick it up as uh, we move on forward here. Yeah, I mean, it's a big pistol round right now for Selfless. Looks like they're going to be stacking up towards inner, watching the ladder. Uh, wise play. They have two players pushed up into this position, so if Selfless goes for the drop into here, they do have some flashes to work with it, but it does look like they're poised to take the B site. Still sticking a man back towards the ladder. That's Relics. Oh, he spots the foot of nothing. Now he knows that there's at least one in this position. He, you could tell he wanted to take that shot, but he knows he's not going to do any damage. So he just waits, and now they'll potentially hold the flank. They know that there's a, a good opportunity for them on the B side if one of them is down towards ladder. But they don't watch the flank. Two players coming in, and it's nothing to get the first frag of the round. Freakazoid finds one as well. Relic's pushing up the ramp. going to spot one, as does Uber. Freakazoid and nothing come down on the flank. It's a 3v3 post plant, and the bomb is in a perfect position here for the T side players. They just have to deal with Stewie, who's close on ramp. He gets one. Peeking and being a nuisance towards the bomb. It's going to be Uber and Relics. Uber with a great shot onto Shroud. Whoa! Fast headshots there from Uber as he takes down Skadoodle and Stewie. And it's a round that Selfless desperately needed to get themselves back into this one. 
What a man mode play from Uber. He's quietly gotten up to 14 kills now. I mean, he's he's right behind Freakazoid, who's at 19. So, I mean, what a play from him, just tapping away. Just That was such a casual 3k at the end of that round. He gets four on the round, but so casual, just tap, 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 tap. Three kills. No big deal. So now we're going to see Team Selfless. Looks like, oh, there's a little team damage again. Freakazoid gets shot right in the buttocks by that scout of, I believe that was nothing that actually shot him in the back. Yeah, it was. Now you actually see Stewie trying to come around and do some damage over here from Connector. He's going to get taken down by Mainline, so a pretty good looking round coming out from the selfless gaming side. Skadoodle and Freak left alive. Skadoodle has salvaged a scout, see if he can do any damage with it, but as of right now, it's uh, all team selfless so far in this round. Not able to do anything. It's a five up round for Selfless. Able to survive with everyone on the board. It's going to allow them to build some money here on their T side, something that they really struggled to do on their CT side. And it's actually Cloud9 who are left reeling here, coming into yet another eco. And they relied on Freakazoid to start things off a lot on their T side. Uh, but on the CT side, Freakazoid in the past has been a little bit underwhelming. But we'll see. I mean, he's feeling it right now. We'll see if that continues onto the CT side as they go for a five man outer stack. Hoping that Selfless attacks this area, but it looks like they could potentially be moving towards Inner again. They do have the bomb in that direction, and they're all moving their way into T-Halls, but it's actually going to be two coming out of T-Connector, Relics, and Mainline. Mainline just peppering shots back towards Ivy and Relics, up towards Sandwich already, walking right into a potential trap here from Cloud9. Oh, he's going to be able to figure this out relatively quickly. Gets danked, finds one. Does get taken down by Stewie, but now they can work their way in towards that inside train yard. Uber coming out through mid. That's such a risky play. Throws away the AK, and it's three on three now. So, not really the most intelligent peek there. He peeked out super wide as well. And Relics had all of the info that there was a lot of players on that outside train yard. So, that was a little bit of a mistake there from the Team Selfless side. But Mitch, Mainline, and Nifty... Gonna try to hold this one down. They've still got the scout on Nifty. They've got the AK and the Mac 10, or pardon me, the Galil and the Mac 10 to work with. But um, Stewie, ooh, I hate the way that the new player models. I I despise the way that they hold the Mac 10. It's so confusing sometimes. It's I sometimes I yeah. think a player has a knife out because yeah, of the I way agree. that they hold the Mac 10. So I peek out and I'm like, oh, he's got a knife out. So I re peek and I died on a Mac 10. It's the most retarded thing I've ever seen. Valve needs to fix that. Yeah, it is a little bit annoying. I, you know, I've seen that happen a few times, and I've heard some players complain about it as well. Um, it's not like the most game-breaking problem. There's still bigger problems, like oh, jump, jump scouts. Yeah. Uh, I, I know a lot of people are complaining about that, or uh, the bomb plant hitbox mismatch, where like on one screen the guy's facing one way, on a, on another player's screen he's facing another way. Uh, that's a bigger problem, but I agree. There's a few issues, and that one is one of the more annoying ones. But either way, we are coming into the first buy here for Cloud9 as Selfless has been able to chain the first three in a row. After picking up the pistol, they pick up the two that follow. Cloud9 coming into a pretty good buy here as they do put the op on board, but hold the phone. It's Selfless who just slaughter on the outer sight, and Stewie in Z-Connector, he has no idea what happened. A minute and 30 left on the clock, and Selfless has already got the bomb down on the A site. And Stewie is now reeling, trying to hold on to this M4. Sped that one up real, real quick, so... They come alive in the second half now. It's going to be 11-8. Cloud9 going to be forced onto another eco round, so it's a little bit wild that it's happening like that. So good job from Selfless. They get themselves on that outside train yard extremely fast, and uh, they finish things off. So 11-8 moving forward. It's going to be Stewie with a rifle into the next round. He's hiding all the way in the in the box halls and the brown halls up there in the inner upper area of uh, the B-bomb site, and he's not going to get pressured because the money on the terrorist side isn't really settled just yet. I mean, 7,300 and 7,500 on relics and and mainline now up over 11k. So nice stuff from them, but we'll see if they can continue on. I mean, a great start here. They just go with raw speed, hoping that Cloud9 would not be prepared, expecting a slow play from Selfless, something that I think has plagued them. Uh, since they started in Premiere was that they played a little bit slow sometimes and they allowed themselves to fall into traps often losing a player before their execution even started making it a little bit weaker so I like that they were able to mix things up here and they're going to be going for it again here running out into outer but that molly prevents the rest of the players from being able to back up Uber who goes down untraded finally it's Mitch to strike back here but look at Stewie up close and personal right now with that M4 and he's going to drop a smoke oh and here we go the classic play that he's become infamous for the flash through the smoke Actually wrapping around Blue Train, spotting two players and crippling the take right now for Selfless as it's just Mitch and Nifty left standing with a minute and 20 on the clock. 
It's going to be very difficult for them to come back into this one. They do have the bomb. It's on the back of Mitch right now. That inside train yard is feeling rather vacant. Only nothing is over here. He doesn't have armor to contend with, but Stewie just doing Stewie things. I mean, again, we see that flash push through the smoke and he nets himself two kills, but they're going to walk on down and Stewie around the backside of the box. I don't know if he heard anything. It looks like he actually heard him. So he's going to be playing this up close angle again and they're going to walk on out. Stewie should be able to find at least one more kill. Very Nifty slow not play. spotting him. Yeah, Nifty doesn't spot him just yet. He's looking for the elbow. Stewie is so close. And a good play from Stewie, getting four on the round, too, catching Nifty and Mitch both coming out of ladder and really solidifying the round for Cloud9. The first one they've been able to pick up in the second half, and it was a split force as they had some rifles on board as well as pistol armor. But a lot of money built up on Selfless means another buy incoming and another opportunity for them to cripple the money on Cloud9, who has struggled early on, and a round victory here would force yet another split buy from them. So the window of opportunity is still open for Selfless. Things aren't over just yet. Yeah, I mean, they get another healthy buy out of this one, but what are they going to do? Are they going to go for another fast IV play? I mean, they've got Mainline over there who does jump across. I don't think Shroud actually saw him jump across either, so i um, curious to see whether or not he's going to be able to react to that, but he's actually worked down behind the little boiler there at the end of that hallway. Shroud does smoke it off, but they're going to boost on up. And he's actually spotting for that boost, so he's laying a little bit of spam out. Oh, see you, Mitch. And now he knows that there's got to be at least one more down there in Ivy. Uh, Flash is so good. Mainline swings. Takes him down. And now he's got CT control. He can go for the backstab on this player that's coming around in CT spawn. It's Skadoodle. Misses the shot. Mainline not able to light him up just enough. But he's going to come around the side. Gets fully flashed. Skadoodle misses another shot, though. Very uncharacteristic from him. He's sitting on 29 HP, but he gets himself out of dodge. CT control now in the hands of the terrorist side. And they're going to go for the pinch on the B bomb site. Well, Stewie does not get the kill on Relics coming out of lower, so now it's going to make things that much harder. Mainline coming in from the back of Z Connector, and they finally spot the man who is in CT spawn that Mainline struggled to kill early on. And now Freakazoid left in a 1v4 with no kit, a lot of utility. In my opinion, this would make sense to save here, but he's going to hold, play for an exit. He does have uh, 1150, so not a lot of money to work with. And he's going to hold for Relics here, a good headshot onto him. But now it's a wonder, uh, you wonder if Selfless is going to go on the hunt. You know, they know that Cloud9 is hurting economically, but they're not looking so hot themselves. Probably keen to just hold on to these rifles at this point. And there you go. Freakazoid just going to make it away with one exit frag. Potentially mainline coming in on the hunt as he's wrapping around towards Ivy. But uh, it looks like it's just going to be a round for Selfless where they hold on to these three rifles. Yeah, he's not going to get there in time. He's probably looking for the op, but it's still in the hands of Nifty. They didn't go for the double up setup on the, on the T side. No reason to go for that, so... We're going to see a ninth round now for Selfless. They're getting themselves back into this. And, you know, I talked about how good Cloud9 was looking. And, I mean, their T side looked fantastic. But what the hell's happened to their CT sides? That was one of the things with this new roster change. Their CT sides looked absolutely phenomenal. And their T sides looked like crap. Then they score, what was it, 11 to 4 in the first half? Yeah, they get 11 rounds on their terrorist side of train. And so far, it's 1 to 5 in the second half. Yeah, but I mean, on the flip side, Selfless actually has had really good T-sides on a lot of maps. Um, and with this new roster, like we said, they played CLG not that long ago, and they put 13 or 12 rounds on their T-side. So they're capable, very capable on the T-side, uh, kind of leveraging some of their individual talent to crack things open, especially the likes of Uber, who's been having a pretty good match thus far. But you can see, I mean, they're spreading the, the load pretty evenly. Uh, Uber's at 16, 13 on Relics, 10 on Mainline. There's really not much separating each of these players, really playing as a team, not relying on one player to do all the work. And it's going to be a strange trade-out early on as Uber drops, but Mainline gets the barbecue onto nothing. And it's now a four-on-four four with one very close on Tcon. That's going to be Freakazoid. A good flash, but he ends up coming out on top of the duel. 19 HP left as he moves towards the corner of Blue. And there you can go. Nifty waiting for him to peek. A good flash as well blinds him. And it's back to a three-on-three. Three. That was his own flash that blinded him. Was it really? I didn't see him throw one, so I wasn't sure. I was switching players at the time. Yeah, he tried to pop flash himself out of the corner. Shroud picks up Mitch at Ivy, so... That was kind of a kill for free. Mitch just kind of walked out right into Shroud's crosshair, and Shroudy picks that one up. So it's going to be a three on two. We'll see whether or not the uh, selfless side can get back into this one. The bomb is dropped up there in the brown halls. I believe Nifty, no, pardon me, Relics is going to be able to pick that up. It's going to lob a smoke grenade outside, and they're going to make their way on out. 
They've already got a little bit of control outside. Now they spot Skadoodle getting up on top of the bomb train. They're going to be able to get right up and get this bomb plant, but Skadoodle is going to find one. He's going to go for the knife. He gets the knife. Why the hell not? A little insult to injury never hurt nobody. But the bomb plant helps a little bit for the selfless side. The knife kill definitely helps for Skadoodle's bank account as well. But we're going to see another buy up here from the uh, team selfless side. So they're going to try to keep the pressure on. Yeah, Mitch actually surprisingly buys himself, even though they had, I think it was like Mainline was sitting on 7k. Maybe he did get a drop then. Yeah, he did, because he only spent 2200 on the round. So uh, Mainline goes with the Galil, drops Mitch and AK because he had a lot of money building up. But uh, this is a really big round for Selfless, uh, a chance to upset the apple cart for Cloud9's money. They really need to pick this one up, because if not, Cloud9's looking at 14 with an eco incoming for Selfless. And uh, it was pretty much GG at that point. So this is a huge round for them. They really need to start out strong here. And surprisingly enough, they're playing really slow when the rounds that they've been able to pick up uh, seem to be a little bit quicker in the pace. Uh, they made their way out of T-Con and taking players down early like they had Freakazoid playing close on E-Box like he is now. He's kind of right towards the front of Bomb Train but now falling back. Uh, it was that fast play that really got them started and they've kind of retreated away from that and I think that's why they're struggling here. Yeah, I'd like to see for him, see them go for another explosive strat. That would definitely be cool. Double up setup now coming out. Shroud's going to have one. He gets naded back on Ivy, so he's going to be pretty wounded throughout the beginning of this round. But again, he does have the AWP, so not the biggest deal right there. Uh, Skadoodle's going to be playing towards inside, playing from the Zed hallway, looking for any kind of aggression. And there's a quick peek out mid. There's the T-Con Lurk coming out, paying dividends already. Nothing goes down. Mainline's Galil is going to reign supreme. Freakazoid on top of the bomb train looking for one. He actually, I don't know if he spotted Mainline Cross or not. Mainline actually crosses back in towards his crosshair. Shroud does find one. That's Mitch down at Ivy again. And now Uber through the smoke finds Shroud looking for more. Not going to find it just yet with the Mainline Galil coming around the side. Going to be able to find one. Relic's answers back and now it's just down to young Stewie. One versus three. So a good response here from Selfless, who have lost a round here and there and allowed Cloud9 to hit that 13th point. Stewie coming in towards ladder. He's got Nifty waiting for him on the opposite side with the up. Mainline getting into position as well with the Galil. Stewie does have a flash to work with, so if he pop flashes his way out, he might be able to spot Mainline. But at this point, money is not so good on Cloud9. He's just looking for exits, allowing Selfless to hit the double-digit rounds. Keeping it very close. A lot of people probably would not give Selfless this many rounds, especially given the new roster. A good peek from Mainline, but an even better shot from Stewie as he responds with a nice tap to the head. And now the bomb is ticking away. He tries to spot Relics. Relics is not going to get away, so a lot of damage dealt by Stewie. And it's just Nifty surviving with the AWP. And he's not even going to want to take a duel with Stewie, who's been on a tear towards the latter half of uh, the round there. But it is a three-round lead for Cloud9 that is slowly thinning. And uh, an eco or force buy likely incoming from Cloud9. So again, three rounds the difference. Selfless bringing this one on back. And like you said, it's going to be pistols. But remember what happened the last time. Stewie got a little cheeky with that M4 and ended up getting a 4K and stealing around the way that should have been no business for Cloud9 to win. This time around, he's going to go back out to the outside train yard. He already wasted his smoke, but he does have two flashes in case he wants to Stewie 2K some people. And uh, we'll see if they're going to give them the opportunity to do that. But the inside train yard is wide open right now. And Stewie's going to play in ladder room. Skadoodle's going to come over to just shoulder peek and double check to make sure that nothing's really coming into that area. But Uber above ladder. There's a flashbang out. Stewie's going to dodge that. No problem just yet. He's still looking for Uber to peek around the corner, but not giving up too terribly much. And Uber? Well, now he's going to join his team. Well, maybe not. I have no idea what Uber's doing. Just patient. They're just playing this slow right now. They're hoping that someone tries to come up ladder. Stewie's just waiting. Uh, you know, Flash is going to come down. It's right on top of him. He actually turns into the Flash. So he doesn't make a sound as he walks away, and that's not going to necessarily sell out his position. Finally puts some bullets into the floor, and that's going to allow Uber to uh, realize what's happening here as he tosses the molly down the ladder. Only one man on the ace, or the B side for that matter. It's going to be Skadoodle popping shots towards upper with the USP. Gets flashed out, and now the entirety of the CT squad has rotated into position. Stewie with the flash through the smoke. His textbook maneuver almost gets the second frag as Nifty escapes with 9 HP. He's going to pepper some bullets through that. And again, Stewie with the pop flash through, looking for another one, and there you go. They don't call it the Stewie 2K for nothing as he picks up two frags pushing through the smoke with a flashbang. Relics all by himself. The bomb is planted and he's spamming away, but eventually succumbs to the pistol through the smoke. 
And it is the 14th round for Cloud9, a round where it feels like it really should have been Selfless's uh, chance to get back in it. But Cloud9 kind of steal one away with a force-up of sorts surrounding the uh, M4 from Stewie with some pistols and nades. Well, I kind of called that at the beginning of the round. You know, you can never count out Stewie in that kind of a situation, man. He's really come alive in this second half. 21 and 14 for him. He's almost caught up to Freakazoid, who's 25 and 15. Shroud still at the bottom, 9 and 15, having a rough go at this one. He's actually the bottom fragger in the server right now, but that's okay because Cloud9 is two rounds away from actually closing out this matchup and moving on to Cash, which they had a lot of luck in yesterday, um, especially with Stewie dropping bombs in that matchup. So it's good to see him coming alive once again. He's leading the way for his team in these last couple of rounds, and uh, nothing but a Negev. Interesting choice. I don't know if he has enough bullets to hold off a push on ladder. Oh, he's gonna fast flank. Oh god. Nifty. Oh, ripperoni pepperoni. Two on three still. Bomb is gonna get planted, so that's gonna help the economy here for the selfless gaming side. Flashbangs go out mainline trying to get himself the hell out of here. Nifty is up top. He does have an AK along with mainline. Let's see if they can make anything happen right now, but. 2v3 retake, definitely favoring the CT side, but mainline moving up on sidewalk. He's just going to hide behind this, but Nifty over peeking gets caught. Now Shroud's in a great position, and he's just ready for it. Takes down mainline. Match point now for Cloud9. And Shroud was stalwart there. He was not moving. Stoic with the defense, just holding with that AWP, knowing that there's a very strong possibility that mainline could push through that smoke. He's anticipating the play, and it just works out nicely for them. If they had doubled up upper... Maybe the round goes a different way, but it is Cloud9 securing the 15th. And now it's a force buy coming in from Selfless. They're going to go with the Tech-9 armor. A lot of utility surrounding those Tech-9s. Uh, they're going to have a Galil on Nifty. I'm curious to see if it's going to be Fast B or Fast A. I expect to see something with speed. Obviously, just trying to get these Tech-9s into position as quick as possible. And only time will tell. Looks like they are going to go towards the inner site. And it is a pretty good round to do so, as they still isolate one man on the inside site. Just Stewie by himself. Yeah, but again, Stewie's been playing lights out here in the second half so far. He's going to get an opportunity to find a couple more kills here as he does have the M4A4 and not the M4A1 this time around. So see if he's going to be able to make anything happen. As the push comes on down, there's no smoke in the way. Skadoodle's going to be able to find the first one. Stewie answers back. Skadoodle does go down, though. Nifty's going to be able to find that. A dink laid out, and now Mainline finds Stewie. So this inside train yard is open for business. They get the bomb down. But they haven't gotten off the site, and that's the scariest part. Freakazoid's going to come in, finds that first opening kill. Relics answers back. It's two ops to finally try to fend this one off. Shroud hits one. It's going to be on mainline with only 17 HP and a dream. See if he can lock this one down. Smoke goes out over top of the bomb. That Molotov is going to be useless. And now he's going to have to push through the smoke. They know that he's in her upper. Nade goes out. That does good damage onto nothing, but the defuse is already out. Shroud gets the insult to injury. And 16 to 10 is going to be map number one in this double BO1 series. So nicely done from Cloud9. They recover late in the half, and they finally get the W. It was a good try by Selfless. They just couldn't bring it back towards the end. They started to bleed rounds on their T side. They worked with speed early on, and that's what allowed them to get so many uh, like rounds on the board. But eventually, they started playing that slow, calculated CS that they became known for previously, but... It just allowed them to walk into traps set up by Cloud9. Uh, and then a lot of times they would get the bomb down, but they couldn't hold. Uh, the post plan just w wasn't really that strong because they were consistently forcing up. So I mean, it was a good game from Selfless. They really put their all into that one, but they do succumb to Cloud9 16-10. Yeah, so that's going to do it for right now. We've got another matchup. It's going to be on Cash. Same two teams, Selfless versus Cloud9. And we'll be back in a few minutes with that one, guys. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Cell Pro League is brought to you in part by Logitech G, Pay Safeguard, TheScoreEsports.com, G2A, NVIDIA, and ESEA.